using the pulmonary valve M mode. Now, that's the best way to evaluate if there is pulmonary artery hypertension. Not its value, but its presence. It's very simple to understand, and I only blame the absence of knowledge of M mode nowadays to the reason why only a few echocardiographers use it. M mode echo shows important abnormalities that may help us in this diagnosis. In normal conditions, the pulmonary valve moves from an anterior position to a posterior position during diastole. It also presents the so-called A wave immediately before the valve opening. This A wave exists because the pulmonary artery pressure is normally too low and the right atrial contraction increases the diastolic pressure inside the right ventricle enough to initiate the opening of the pulmonary valve. If there is pulmonary hypertension, we are going to see some alterations in the movement of this valve. Notice that the valve lost its diastolic anteroposterior movement. Now it may be horizontal. It also has lost the A wave. This is the most important sign. Why does it happen? Because of the high pressure in the pulmonary artery, the increase in the diastolic right ventricular pressure due to right atrial contraction is not enough anymore to initiate the opening of the pulmonary valve. The A wave disappears. During the systolic period, we occasionally see a mid-systolic closing with late systolic reopening of the valve. These are the three signs that may be encountered in the pulmonary valve when there is pulmonary arterial hypertension. The absence of an A wave has an accuracy of more than 90% to diagnose pulmonary hypertension. The other signs are not as good and really not necessary for the diagnosis. Just to remind the normal M mode movement of the pulmonary valve. The valve moves from an anterior position, point E, to a posterior position during diastole. During mid-diastole, it makes a curvature, point F. When the valve changes from an oblique to a horizontal position. During right atrial contraction, there is an A wave immediately before the systolic opening, point B. During inspiration, the A wave increases. Notice that the pulmonary valve M mode shows a rapid thinning of the echoes coming from the valve during ejection, point B, but not from the A wave that keeps the same thickness as the whole of the diastolic period. This difference may help us to distinguish the initial diastolic A wave posterior movement from the systolic rapid ejection in some patients where the systolic opening is not well seen when the valve joins the arterial wall and disappears. Now a pulmonary M mode showing pulmonary arterial hypertension. The diastolic segment is horizontal. There is no A wave. See here the initial ejection with no preceding A wave. In this case, there is no mid-systolic closure and reopening. Another pulmonary hypertension with a flat horizontal diastolic valve and absence of an A wave. The tiny curvature seen farther away from the rapid systolic opening is due to the normal, yet decreased in this case, movement when the valve changes from an oblique to a horizontal position, as described in the normal valve movement as point F. One more case of pulmonary arterial hypertension with all its three characteristics. It almost lost totally the anteroposterior diastolic movement 
there is no A wave and there is a mid systolic closing and late systolic reopening of the valve. Interesting to notice that these three signs, the only that indicates pulmonary hypertension is the absence of an A wave. The flattening of the whole diastolic segment of the pulmonary valve is not a sign of pulmonary hypertension by itself. It correlates with the pathological condition that produces pulmonary hypertension. In normal situation, the whole cardiac base is projected forward during systole, depending on the ejection volume of the left ventricle. Then, in the situations where there is decreased left ventricular ejection volume, this heart base is not thrown forward during systole. Then, during diastole, it does not return since it did not move forward before. The pulmonary valve shows the same displacement as the whole cardiac base. It was not thrown forward during systole. Then it does not return during diastole. The sign then is frequently encountered in patients with pulmonary artery hypertension, but it is not a sign of pulmonary hypertension, but of the condition that may be associated with it, like any situation that decreases the systolic function of the left ventricle. The same thing happens with the mid-systolic closure of the pulmonary valve. The picture shows the pulse doppler at the right ventricular outflow tract depicting the mid-systolic decrease in flow that may close the valve and then the late systolic increase that reopens the pulmonary valve. This closure may occur whenever there is a dilation of the pulmonary artery. It is not frequent to find an obvious dilation of the pulmonary artery in the pulmonary hypertension due to left side cardiac problem in an adult. Then this is a very rare sign. What may cause this mid-systolic closure seems to be the dilation of the pulmonary artery and not the pulmonary hypertension. Any dilation of this artery, like an idiopathic dilation or any constriction of the right ventricular outflow, like a subpulmonary obstruction, may produce this mid-systolic closing. This also happens in the aortic valve, when there is a subaortic stenosis or ascending aortic dilation. Whenever the blood flow is going through a narrow subvalvar region and reaches a normal artery size or going through a normal subvolvar area and reach a dilated artery, the blood flow spiral forming vortex and returns, tending to close the valve. This sign is seen usually when there is severe pulmonary hypertension. Another cause for this sign is when the hypertension is precapillary. It seems that a return pulsed wave becomes earlier than when it is post-capillary and able to produce this mid-systolic closure and reopening of the pulmonary valve and this abnormality in the Doppler flow. Another instance of severe pulmonary hypertension, pulse Doppler, notice how the regression equation predicted a mean arterial pulmonary pressure of only 19 millimeters of mercury. It does not work as most of the regression equation in biology. As a matter of fact, the spectral Doppler as well as the M-mode pulmonary valve mid-closure with late reopening are more indicators of severe pulmonary hypertension and differ from the usual spectral Doppler with a short acceleration time since they have pulmonary vascular disease, high pulmonary vascular resistance, severe pulmonary arterial hypertension, and right ventricular dysfunction, usually seen in primary pulmonary hypertension.